Joining us now with more Senate Foreign Relations Committee member, Senator John Barrasso of Wyoming. Uh, Senator, thank you for being here. Uh, it's, it's, it can no better be described as a fiasco what's going on in Afghanistan right now. The president uh, did the best to put lipstick on a pig, but there's not a lot of lipstick and there's an awful lot of, of piggish behavior going on right now, particularly in the streets of Afghanistan where the Taliban apparently have already been rounding up people that work for the, foreign, uh, the former regime. It's just a complete and utter debacle. Uh, how would you describe it and the president's response to it? Well, we saw today a president in deep denial of the chaos and destruction that were caused specifically by his actions. He ignored the advice of his military leaders. He ignored the advice of his national security advisors as well. What he said is the buck stops here. But as he was saying that, he was blaming everybody other than himself. The blood is clearly on his shoulders. Senator, he said uh, the troops. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, for, I'm yes. sorry. Go ahead. No, he also said the troops deserve better. Look, this what has happened there today and as a result of this decision by President Biden to pull out in the way that he did, whether you agree or don't agree, we should have troops in Afghanistan. This execution has been terrible, terrible. And people will get executed as a result. So this is a slap in the face of the men and women in uniform who served and who've sacrificed over the years. And the third thing he said is that the reason we went to Afghanistan is so they wouldn't have a stand for terrorists to attack the United States. So in just a few weeks, 9-11, the 20th anniversary of the attack of the United States, we're going to have the Taliban and terrorists back in charge of Afghanistan, where the original attacks were planned and launched from. Senator, you're a Republican, obviously, uh, but even Democrats now and some diplomats who have uh, no particular political party are questioning this president's ability to lead as commander in chief. Uh, I refer to Obama era ambassador to Afghanistan, Ryan Crocker, who said the following uh, to the Spokane Spokesman Review. I'm left with some grave questions in my mind about his, referring to President Biden's, ability to lead our nation as commander in chief. To have read this so wrong, or even worse, to have understood what was likely to happen and not care. Again, this is a career diplomat. Uh, he served in the Obama administration. Would you go with his beliefs? Well, I would. You know, maybe President Biden had wishful thinking about the way things were going to go, but he ultimately ended up very flat-footed, asleep at the switch, unable to deal with the situation on the ground. He was so committed to the calendar on the wall that he ignored the situation on the ground. That's why we find us in this situation today. You know, they're talking about how many people he can get out. I was on a call yesterday with the Secretary of, of State, and he said there are at least 60,000 people they're trying to get out of the country. They're going to have a hard time getting to that airport. The Taliban have names. They are going after these people. They will hunt them down. They will punish them. They will execute them. There is not going to be, whether we can control the airport or not, a simple exodus from the country yeah. of people that have helped us over the years, those people will lose their lives because of the way that President Biden executed this exit from Afghanistan, whether you're for staying in Afghanistan or not. We were in a peaceful situation for the last year. I was, I've was i been to Afghanistan over 10 times, uh, know the people on the ground, and it is heartbreaking to see what is happening yeah. there today. Senator, we have to go, but before we do, we have to reassess our, our vulnerability to terrorism after this, do we not? Because these people who are in control, who've been let out of the prisons there are international terrorists. They have struck before. Several of them have actually been in, in Gitmo uh, and, and been released uh, now. How do we reassess our own vulnerability to the threat of terrorism? Yeah, well, you have a couple things. One is Biden's own budget. The only two things that he doesn't even keep up with inflation is one, the Department of Home is Homeland Security, and the other is our military. So his values are not the values that I have in terms of where we ought to be funding and the protection for America. And then he had the nerve to mention ISIS in that speech. ISIS 
grew in an area that the Obama-Biden administration vacated in right. Iraq. The void was filled with terrorists, and it was President Trump who came in to destroy ISIS. Every administration inherits from the previous administration mm -hmm. the situation on the ground. And Joe Biden inherited a situation, 2,500 troops on the ground in Afghanistan, a generally much more peaceful situation than what we're seeing today. And I think that the videos that people are seeing, you got to decide who are you going to believe, the video, what you see with your own two eyes, or what Joe Biden is telling you. And I think Joe Biden has lost amazing credibility as a result of this past weekend, not just at home, but also around the world. Senator John Barrasso, good to see you, sir. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it.